Factorio is about freedom. The freedom to build whatever you want. The freedom to conserve the environment. <coughs> <laughs> and spreading that freedom with American diplomacy. Similar to RimWorld in that both games have a player base of friendly psychopaths, Fractorio is the crowning achievement of masochism gone right. As a proud American, my goal here today is simple, to save these insects from the tyranny of their non-consumerist lifestyles and to liberate them from the burden of having oil. So myself and a few friends set out to spread freedom at any cost. We'd all played a few games of Factorio beforehand, all of which he's done, ended he's done, he's unexpectedly. Done, he's done. Lag had also been an issue, and morale was stop, stop, not stop, stop, always stop. the move, best. Move in an organized fashion. Okay. Fuck you! Because in Factorio, you begin the game crash landing your ship, and we only start with a drill, a furnace, and a dream. Our team was made up of Tao, who was from Lesser America, but was also a seasoned yeah, Factorio you want veteran. Ammo? You want ammo? Okay, go kill Grim, sure, and don't let hey, him ever leave. Hey, hey, hey. Aroda, a true patriot who had PTSD from his past time in the game. Hey, thanks for the thanks for the thing, yoink. Hey! Hey! Get back here! And Jesus, who had no Factorio experience and embodied the team spirit. Wait, no, I'm gonna live! I'm gonna live! I can kill him! Not if I have anything to say about it. We began setting up the drills to mine the major resources we needed. Coal, iron, stone, and copper. Automation is the main part of the game. Why mine when you can get a machine to do it? Why craft yourself when a robot can craft faster? As the game progresses, this quickly gets complicated as crafting recipes become more complex and your factory expands. If you built a poorly organized system, at the start of the game, it'll end up terrorizing you later down the line. Of course, if you're like me, you know that's a not now problem, and we pretend those don't exist. The overarching goal of the game is to build a rocket and escape, which should be pretty familiar. But our goal today is the mass production of something far greater than a mere rocket. We want oil. And what easier way is there to do that than to pollute the environment with heavy machinery? But unlike real life, pollution isn't just cosmetic. It kills trees and angers the local hippie population. The more machines you have, the more pollution you make, and the more more pollution you make, the more mother nature you get to rip and tear. So all around, it's a win-win. By this point, we had completed the basics of our factory and gotten electricity up and running. Oh, is that? Oh my god, you already got power up. Eight minutes in, I like that. But now we needed to start work on a main furnace array. This is what all of our mined ore would filter through to produce smelted plates and workable resources. And with all three-fourths of us working and contributing, we were able to get a decent amount of work done on it. With only minor environmental effects. God, these trees have already been polluted and died. Kill all the trees! Grim, how's it feel leading to the detriment of the environment here? No need to thank me, citizen. But this point, copper and iron production were skyrocketing, which meant it was time to manufacture. Assemblers are another core component of the game because they automatically craft specified items for you provided you feed them resources, which is where the conveyor belts come in. It's also where we start to research en masse, because in order to advance our technology, we need to craft research packs. For these, you use assembly lines to automatically craft and transport them to research stations. I was in charge of this, which was a sizable mistake, because as we get more advanced research packs, it becomes much more complicated to produce them, so you'll see the negative effects of that later. Despite this, things were moving along and quickly. Aroda was out emptying the local lake and turning it into steam power while Tao was continuing production. And Jesus went AFK at a bad time. Oh, can you move Jesus? My bad, Skater. Sorry, Jesus, I gotta progress calls. But our continued success wasn't entirely unopposed. Our pollution was starting to reach the edges of insect bases, which meant that if we kept going, they'd start to attack. We needed to mobilize and fast. We first undertook a simple propaganda campaign to ensure we understood the bugs were our true enemy. They <laughs> took our iron. They don't took our iron. Really pisses me off. They took our iron. And yes, these accents continued for the better part of two hours. Where's my child support? They took took our lungs. <laughs> But now it was time to fan the flames of war. We researched turrets, walls, and more weapons. Each person was equipped with a machine gun and ammo was being produced by the bell. I was in charge of making turrets. So I made something to do that. Then I forgot about it. We had multiple assembly lines dedicated to creating walls, ammo, and now truckloads of grenades. Unfortunately, grenades are also needed for military science packs because, you know, science. We were running into a major problem though, scarcity. You see, the ore that these drills are on doesn't last forever and has a finite amount that can be mined, and at this point, we were running out. Couple that with the threat of insects, and we needed to expand badly. Luckily, further west of our base was a massive deposit of iron, and wouldn't you know, right next to it was a field of pure liquid oil. For the time 
time being, we were able to ignore the insects in order to focus on more important matters. In Factorio, oil refining is a pain. You need pumps, refineries, chemical plants, water, and massive transportation for fluids. And right now, we were on step zero. I decided to try creating a train network to connect the oil pumping area with the site for our refinery. All right, train, let's go, partner. Ah, oh, shit, there's a car on the road. Get out of the way. Oh, that's my car. There were some minor obstacles, such as me having no idea how trains work. No, my train. Oh, I got in it. Wait. Who's driving this? What do you mean, who's driving it? No one's dri Oh fuck, it's going on its own. <laughs> uh, I'm stuck in the train, I can't get out. And with the massive brain I have, I made the train network only have one rail that looped around, so collisions were unavoidable. Come on at me, Grim. Uh, where are you? Where is you? Oh. I also had to contend with people stealing my train more times than I'm willing to admit. No, they took my train. <laughs> I can't have shit in Detroit. God damn it. I'm, pre I'm mashing enter. I'm getting in that train. Yeah, no, fuck. I pressed enter again. Go, Jesus. Not to mention the many, many no. drive-by attempts on my life. While I was building the train yard, Tao and Arota worked on finalizing the western expansion with a whole new set of smelting. And because our beautiful pumps were now operational, we just needed to make the refinery to start producing fuel, plastic, and sulfur. With the combination of these things, we could move on to our next goal tank production. Before now, biter attacks have been pretty small, so we could mostly use our pistols and grenades to take care of them. But our recent expansion uncovered some unpleasant surprises. We didn't think much of it until they knocked out the entire power grid. Uh -oh. Okay, I'm coming down now. Right away, Arota went about making our base great again, but by now the insects had evolved. Massive range variations were able to kill our barricades from a distance, so we needed a solution. Luckily, I remembered the turrets I was building. All 1,200 of them. This would suffice. We'd also accidentally banked up more than enough ammo and grenades. We tripled our walls, threw down hundreds of turrets, and decided now was the time to go on the offensive. With our recent oil refining, we got the materials necessary to build some American weaponry, such as a giant tank with a flamethrower and a cannon with a minigun. Whip out the machine gun, blow him down. <laughs> yeah. I'm rolling through. Oh shit, no, no. <laughs> no, please get us out of here. I'm going, I'm going, shoot him. Oh, We're Jesus. so fucked. Help me! Ah! To the gun, get back to the guns! The first campaign could have gone better. So beside me driving head first into the insect hive, what went wrong? Taking out hives was easy, but we weren't putting out enough damage to stop them from closing the gap and chasing us. Well, tanks have a lot of health. They could literally wade into hives and still not die. So how could we make use of that? The answer, drones. We'd unlock the technology to create these single-use time defender drones that would orbit around us. They didn't last very long or do a lot of damage, but we could deploy 30 of them at a time. So I built some assemblers to mass produce them and left to go work on getting some research done. I needed to make some of the more advanced research packs, which I was told wasn't that bad. 12 seconds later. We'll just uh, do that later. I went back to check on the drones, only to find I had 556 of them, which was more than I could ever possibly need. So with the new technology, a rearmed tank, and better fuel, could we really take on the biters? Apparently, yes. Yes, by a lot. Combining the tank's massive HP pool and the short range of drones, I could just walk through swaths of insects while the drones mowed everything down. The range biters still did damage, but everything that got close just got evaporated. After a bit of work, I'd successfully cleared the insects from one hive. All right, hive one cleared. If clearing one hive was that easy, I mean, how many more could there possibly be? Ah. That, uh, that could be a problem. Not to mention that destroying hives is only really a short-term bonus, because the hives behind them aggro and attack anyways. So our only real option was to retreat to the wall and defend. After about two hours of getting run over and pulling my hair out, I'd finally managed to get our research going. And with it, robotics. Robotics gives access to new, more useful drones such as logistics and construction bots, so instead of needing to build everything ourselves, we could just dispatch drones to do it for us. The orange highlighted zone right here is the area covered by drone networks. Within these areas, drones repair and replace structures, effectively automating a whole new level of our defenses. But while all of this was good at repelling the eco-terrorists, we were still getting whittled down and needed to expand further. 
there. And there was only one thing, one American thing in this entire Factorio hellscape that could save us now. Nuclear weapons. We had walls, defenses, and uranium, but what we needed now was research. The atomic bomb is one of the last military technologies in the game, and we were running off borrowed time. After hours of warring with the local insect population, things had gotten to a standstill. On the one side, the unions were evolving and getting stronger. On the other, we were speeding through research in hopes of keeping up. Thus sparked the beginning of the Great Cold War. Trademark, coming soon to a theater near you. Click the red nuclear launch button if you want part two. Enough atomic detonations and we can turn that Cold War into a crusade for democracy. Don't let the goddamn commies win. Thanks for watching. See ya.